Over the past few years, Target stock has had a lot of volatility. We can see the company is currently trading at about $159 per share after releasing their latest quarter's earnings, and over the past year, they're now up around 29%. But this huge run-up in share price has not been the entire story for the company over the past few years. If we look at the past five years, yes, they are up around 53%, but look at this. They are trading as high as around $265 per share in summer of 2021, and if we look in early 2022, around $250 per share. Now right here, if you look at this, this is where they had the largest sell-off in a single day ever. And at the time, there was a lot going wrong with the company. They released a very poor earnings report. They're in the midst of a lot of political controversy and people really were beginning to not trust the management team. And for a while, it didn't get any better. We can see at this point, they're trading at about $160 per share. And over the next year or so, they got all the way down to around $105 per share. Now, historically speaking, Target's done really well. This company is a dividend king. If we jump over to my dividend breakdown sheet and plug in TGT, we can see the company currently has a starting dividend yield sitting at about 2.82%. The five-year dividend growth has been really good at about 11.5% over the past 10 years, sitting at about 9%. And for the most part, the free cash flow payout ratio looks relatively healthy with the exception of 2022 when free cash flow was negative. So from a dividend perspective, things look pretty good for this company overall. Now, one thing I do want to mention is the most recent dividend hike was a small one. They went from $4.36 to about $4.48, which is pretty low single digit dividend growth. That's not something I want to see. So yes, historically a great dividend stock, but over the past few years has really struggled. Now we can see over the past few months, especially starting in late 2023 and carrying over into 2024, the company has started to recover. If we look at year to date, they're currently up about 11.57%. And if we look at the past month alone, they're now up around 6.53%. So let's go ahead and dig into the earnings report and see exactly what's going on with this company. We can see they beat on top and bottom lines. Q2 non-gap earnings per share of $2.57 was a beat by about 39 cents and revenue came in at 25.45 billion, which is only up about 2.7% year over year, but was a beat by 240 million. If we dig into a little more details, we can see comparable sales up 2%, store comparable sales up 0.7%, digital comparable sales up 8.7%, so we can see positive growth across the line right here. Now, if you're looking at this, you're probably thinking, okay, digital comparable sales growth, 8.7%, that's pretty solid but these others really aren't that great. Does that justify the huge run-up in share price? Well, you have to understand, if we look at these exact same metrics charted out, so again, here we are, Q2 2024, comparable sales, 2%, store comparables, 0.7%, and then digitally originated, 8.7%. Yes, these two are slow, but for the past few quarters, they had actually been negative. So investors are really excited simply to see positive growth again in these areas. Now in late 2021 and early 2022, they were seeing double digit growth in some of these areas and high single digit growth. And then it started to slow down in late 2022. And then 2023 is when things got really bad. Like I mentioned, they saw negative growth in all of these areas. So this appears to be a sign that Target is getting back on the right track. Now, if we jump over to my profitability spreadsheet, we can see where another area of concern has been for Target. I'll plug in TGT and you can see all this data will load in. And again, all this data is able to automatically load in thanks to the help of the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets. If you'd like to be able to get this add-on to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet and also get access to any of the spreadsheets you see in my videos, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. Okay, but the huge problem for Target, if we come over here and look at the gross profit ratio, we can see the 10 year average gross profit ratio for this company is sitting at 28.67%, but this was drastically reduced in 2022 and 2023. The 2022 gross profit ratio got as low as 24.64% and in 2023, 25.38%. So those margins are really hurting over the past couple of years. So this is another area where Target has been looking to improve, but we need to look at what happened in the most recent quarter. If we look at 2023, we can see the gross profit ratio was sitting at 25.38%, so quite a bit lower than that 10-year average. But if we look at what happened in Q2 of 2024 by using the ticker data add-on, all I need to do is plug in gross profit ratio here, select 2024 and Q2 and hit enter. And what we can see is the 2024 Q2 gross profit ratio has really started to recover and is a pretty drastic improvement from the 2023 gross profit ratio. So it's starting to become more clear why investors were excited about this most recent earnings report. They're back to seeing positive growth when it comes to all three sales segments. And if we scroll down, we can see traffic is growing as well. Q2 comparable sales growth was driven entirely by traffic, up 3% compared to last year. And then of course, like I mentioned, there was a huge boost to the gross profit ratio, no doubt a huge improvement for the company. Now, if we look at the stock screener for this company, 
what we can see is revenue per share was a little bit slow growing from 2013 to around 2016, but since then, top lines for the most part have grown. We can see, like you'd expect, 2022 and 23, it kind of stagnated, and as a result, the share price did suffer. Free cash flow per share struggled pretty bad in 2022 and 2023 as well, but it looks like we're starting to see a bit of recovery, and the same is true for the earnings per share. But then also, like I mentioned earlier, this company's a dividend king. They've been paying out dividends for 50 consecutive years. But if you look at shares outstanding, they've also bought back a lot of shares over the past decade, going from around 635 million all the way down to now 461 million shares outstanding. So don't count out their share buybacks, they've bought back quite a bit over the past few years. So for a lot of people, they're pretty excited because the general consensus is Target is finally starting to get back to where they want to be. So with that being said, is Target a good stock to consider adding to your portfolio at $158.90 per share? Now disclaimer like always, Target is a small position in my personal portfolio as of right now, and I'm actually up slightly on this position. You can see right here, it looks like as of right now, I'm up about 15.2% on this position. But is it a good stock to consider adding to our portfolio right now? And to answer that, let's go ahead and jump over to our stock valuation spreadsheet. I've already plugged in Target right here, and we can see the company has a beta of about 1.2, so you will see a little more volatility than that of the market. Now if we go ahead and jump into our first valuation, we're going to look at Graham's valuation. And here's the formula Benjamin Graham lays out for us to calculate intrinsic value. So first off, we need our estimated earnings per share average for Target. Now this is actually something they talked about in the recent earnings report. They revised this. The company now expects four year gap and adjusted earnings per share of $9 to $9.70, which is up from the prior range of $8.60 to $9.60. So they boosted their guidance. Again, a great sign for the stock and another reason that the company is trading up so much. So I went with about nine, which is around in the middle of their guidance. I then applied growth rate projections in line with analyst expectations. We applied all that to the formula and then divided by Y, which is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds. And this gives us an intrinsic value of about $154.76, which is actually pretty close to that current trading price. Now, the next valuation we'll look at is going to be our discounted cash flow analysis. And this value is a company based on the free cash flow they're projected to produce in the future. Now, free cash flow in 2023 was quite a bit lower than it was in 2019, 2020, and 2021. So they'll probably recover closer to those levels and then we'll see a lower growth rate. But in this scenario, I'm projecting a free cash flow growth rate of about 8.5% to the future free cash flows. I found the present value of those future free cash flows and added them together, added the company's cash and cash equivalents and subtracted out total debt to get equity value divided by shares outstanding and we got a DCF price per share of $171.16. Now the next valuation we're gonna look at is gonna be our multiples valuation. And basically what we're doing is we're valuing the company based on how the market is valuing these companies that are similar in structure. So we have companies like Walmart, Kroger, BJ's Wholesale Club, and Dollar General. We take their stock price, divide by earnings per share to get the price to earnings multiple. Now, one of the things we'll notice is Walmart's currently trading at a very high price to earnings multiple. So they're a little bit of an outlier in the scenario. So instead of taking the average in the scenario, we're actually gonna take the median price to earnings of these companies, which is 19.49. So if we apply that same median price to earnings to Target, we'd come to an intrinsic value of about $174.83. Now, the last valuation we're gonna look at is gonna be our dividend discount model. This values the company based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is increasing. So you can see our historical dividends right here. They had a really nice stretch of huge dividend increases from 2021, 2022, and 2023, but the most recent one was a small one at about 2.75%. So moving forward, I think the dividend growth will be a little bit higher than this. Dividend growth rate of 6% is what I'm projecting, so with a discount rate of 8.5%, we come to a DDM price per share of about $189.95. So when we jump over to the output tab, we can see the four different valuations that we use. Grams at 154, multiples at 174, DCF 171, and dividend discount model close to 190. And when we average those four together, we come to an intrinsic value of $172.68. Now that's about 8% off from the current share price, but with a 10% margin of safety, it looks like our acceptable buy price is around $155.41 per share. So it's not quite within our buy range at current prices. Now, one of the problems I've had with Target in the past is they put themselves in the midst of a lot of political controversy. And I'd actually argue that they did this at the expense of their shareholders. And that may have had something to do with some of the sell-off we saw in the recent years. Obviously, there was a lot more to it than just that, but it may have played a role. So in my opinion right now, as long as management can put their shareholders first and stay away from the political controversy, 
it looks like they're starting to get back on the right track. Right now, the company has a decent starting dividend yield, and I'd expect to see some solid dividend growth moving forward. For me personally, I don't plan on adding any shares at current prices, but I'm perfectly fine continuing to hold the stock and reinvest my dividends. But go ahead and let me know what you think of Target stock in the comments down below if you plan on buying or selling. And like always, if you'd like to, be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.